For this chapter, we'll talk about one of the more popular two-handed flogging techniques called Florentine flogging, or double or triple weave. Some have said that the name Florentine flogging is so named after the ancient sword fighting style that was started in Florence, Italy, in which two weapons were used. However, the actual execution of Florentine flogging is similar to that of a move in poi spinning or fire spinning. The idea is to keep the flogging steady and constant by means of a fluid motion of interlocking figure eight patterns. Florentine two-handed flogging is best achieved using two identical floggers, though there are some people that purposely flog with two different kinds of floggers to produce a different feel with each strike. However, I suggest using two identical floggers to learn the Florentine. You can Florentine with just about any sort of flogger sets from single tail whips to cat of nine tails. I prefer a set of good leather floggers, about 34 tails, and I prefer deer as it has a lighter weight that can still deliver either a thud or a sting, depending on how vigorously you wield it. You should choose whichever leather you feel most comfortable with. However, I do suggest being weary of purchasing a flogger made of poor quality leather or imitation leather. Learn the difference between good leather and cheap leather. Make sure you are comfortable with the weight and the balance of your flogger. Make sure the handle feels comfortable in your grasp. Cut the tips of the falls to your preference, square, round, or angled. I prefer angled tips for Florentine, which works great when just teasing the skin before a strike. Learn your flogger well, practice often, before trying any sort of flogging session on a play partner. There are two common types of Florentine, called four point and six point. So named because it takes either four or six steps before the swinging pattern recycles. In a four-point Florentine, your dominant hand creates the figure eight pattern, keeping the strikes at an angle to your target. Your non-dominant hand also creates a figure eight pattern, but stays underneath the dominant hand at all times. In a four-point Florentine, the dominant hand always stays above the non-dominant hand. Whereas in a six-point Florentine, the two figure eights intertwine and the hands interchange, where your dominant hand takes turns with your non-dominant hand being on top. The wrists stay somewhat close together, keeping the motion as smooth as possible with a steady flow. Being that the Florentine is two interlocking figure eight patterns, it's important to first learn the two stroke figure eight pattern well, with each hand individually. First practice making the figure eight pattern, which is really an elongated infinity sign. The figure eight creates an X pattern on your play partner so that the strikes hit on the downstroke from each side. The reason why we create the figure eight X pattern is so that when flogging a person's back, the strikes cross a person's spine rather than vertical strokes that can be dangerous on a person's spine. Vertical strikes can easily hit the top of the shoulders or the neck. Strikes that are delivered at an angle to the shoulder blades tend to be more accurate. Even when flogging other body parts, the figure eight motion allows you to strike true while keeping the strikes constant and steady. Before you can learn two-handed flogging, you need to make sure that you are proficient with this figure eight infinity pattern motion. Once you have mastered it with your dominant hand, you will then need to practice until you are proficient with your non-dominant hand. If you are right-handed, then your right hand is your dominant hand and your left hand is your non-dominant hand. It usually takes a great deal more practice to become proficient with your non-dominant hand. Once you feel comfortable with both hands, then you can begin to try to swing both hands simultaneously. Many say the best way to learn the Florentine is to count it out slowly, step by step, until the pattern repeats. The four point is the easiest one to learn and the easiest to master. Most tops only use the four point. A good way to learn the motion is to start off by practicing on the edge of a bed, the back of a couch, or a table such as this massage table that I'm using. Just something that catches the falls. The height should be a little lower than crotch height. Use some pillows to raise up the height if your bed is too low. First with your dominant hand, create a figure eight pattern in the air. Only let the striking area land on the table, couch, or bed then your non-dominant hand. Practice this quite a bit until you feel that you can wield both floggers accurately and with ease onto the surface. In order to combine the two, start with both floggers to your non-dominant side, ready for your dominant hand to strike a backhand. Strike a backhand. Do this several times to get used to the strike so you remember where to start. 
Okay, let's start. Strike the backhand. This is your first step, step one. Let the flogger drop off the edge of the bed or table to your dominant side. Then follow the strike with your non-dominant hand. This is step two. While letting this also fall off the table to the dominant side, begin your overhand strike with your dominant hand. This is step three. Brush that off the edge of the table back to your non-dominant side, which should leave your arms completely crossed. Then wield your non-dominant hand into a backhand motion, creating step four. Pull that off the bed to your non-dominant side. This will put you back at the starting position, completing the sequence. Let's go through that again. A backhand, point one. Drag to your dominant side. Point two. Also drag to your dominant side while starting point three. Drag that off, which crosses your hands. Backhand to point four. Drag that off the table to the starting position. Repeat this sequence slowly, counting them out over and over again until the entire sequence starts to flow together as one. One. Two. Three. Four. One. Two. Three. Four. One. Two. Three, four. Notice how the dominant hand always stays on top of the non-dominant hand. After you become proficient at this, start to keep your wrist as close together as possible. This will start to make the motion smoother and more fluid. Here is the four-point Florentine slowed down. After you become proficient at this with your wrists close together, move to practicing the same motion in the air with only an imaginary target in front of you. Occasionally count the steps out, but also sometimes practice without counting, letting the steps meld together. Then start practicing at a target. You can tape a mark on the wall or create a practice target like I have on this pillow that I fastened with belts to a St. Andrew's cross. Practice keeping your strokes in a figure eight infinity, striking the target in an X pattern. You must practice this often until you are confident you can strike with accuracy. Then you can move to practicing on a person, having your submissive wear thick clothing or a heavy leather jacket. This is a good way to practice for the first time on a willing subject. I painted strike zones on my leather jacket to help with my practice. The white spots are good areas to strike. The pink areas are areas to avoid. Keep a watchful eye on the strikes from your non-dominant hand, making sure they land true. Then you can move up to executing the Florentine on human flesh. Try different intensities of strikes while keeping the Florentine going. The more often you practice this, the more continuous the sequence will become. A six-point Florentine is just a little bit different, but for some, it will be far more difficult to master. Basically, rather than one figure eight staying on top of the other, in a six-point, the figure eights intertwine in which your wrist interchange taking turns being on top. Don't try the six point until you've completely learned the four point. It is difficult to explain this, stopping on each step the way we did with the four point. Instead of striking the table with each step, it is best to follow the steps as one complete motion, still counting them out in your head. Instead of thinking of the motion in regards to four steps, think of it as a motion of three steps, three that serves the dominant hand on top, and then three that serves the non-dominant hand on top, making a full six point. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Move as slow as you can, counting out the steps, and then gradually increase your speed. This might take some time to figure out, and you might find yourself falling back into a four point as you learn this, which is totally fine. 
If you sort out how to switch hands during a four point, it automatically becomes a six point. The motion is still interlocking figure eights, but the motion is a little tighter, now a more compressed infinity sign. One, two, three, four, five, and six. If you're having trouble getting this, first wield the four point Florentine and then try to interlock the figure eights, or just simply envision your wrist taking turns being on top. After you start to get the hang of it, practice to the air. Then practice on a fixed target. Then to a person with heavy clothing or padding. Then to naked skin. The six-point Florentine looks really smooth with finger floggers, swivel floggers, or swinging from the wrist straps or safety straps. The smooth motion of the swivel floggers is a great way for adding a tease to your play partner, brushing the tips of the falls against the skin. Though the motion could be a lot smoother looking, you do lose some level of control with swivel floggers, and it becomes more of a whipping motion to strike hard. My favorite position is to hold my floggers by these rings. It gives me the same smooth motion as swivel floggers, yet I can also take control of the handle quickly for a harder strike by squeezing my fingers together on the rings, giving me more control and accuracy. You can add large eye bolts to many dense wood handles, or again swing from the wrist straps. Once you master the four point and the six point, try to switch between the two, which can really change up the sensation and the look of your flogging technique. A good way to practice changing up between the four and the six is to practice with something really light, such as scarves, dish towels, or washcloths. Don't worry about how difficult it is to control the dish towels. This is only so you can learn the motions. As you get better at the Florentine, then try to keep your wrists together as close as you can. Some even practice by tying their arms together to learn how to keep the technique tight, wrists close together, keeping an even, steady flow. There are slight variations to the Florentine technique. I sometimes even add an extra twist to mine to help with my accuracy of my non-dominant hand. You have to figure out which works best for you. Flogging is a dance between you and your partner. It's not a platform to show off how fancy your flogging technique is. The two-handed Florentine flogging is a great way to produce a steady flowing flagellation experience, but it can also be a sure way to draw the focus away from what is important in a scene. Keep your ego in check and keep your focus on your play partner. No matter which technique you choose or feel comfortable with, practice until you are sure you have accuracy to ensure the safety of the people you are playing with. You need to practice often and never stop practicing. Have fun, play safe. In the next chapter, we'll go over close range flogging, which is flogging while being up close to your target, using a flogger with much shorter falls. We'll also get into some of the best ways to clean your floggers, and then what is the best way to care for the leather after a cleaning. That's it for now. See you in the next chapter. Cheers.